thinking really that in the ministry of Jesus, Jesus moved in the power of the Holy Spirit. And the Bible will show us that it was times when Jesus prophesied. And even though Jesus prophesied, it doesn't write in the Word of God that Jesus prophesied. There was times in the life of Jesus where he knew what was in a person's heart. And even though he knew what was in their heart, it doesn't say he moved in discerning of spirits. There was times in his life where he knew what a person was thinking. But it doesn't say he had the word of knowledge. And you know the reason why it doesn't list that Jesus moved in the gifts of the Spirit? Because he moved in the fullness of the Spirit. And I believe that's the place that God wants us to be, to move in to the fullness of his Spirit. Our God is a great God. Yes. Many when I was looking at you, the Lord would say, because you're sold into the glory, the Lord says, I'm going to sow within your life certain principles that would allow you to attain and to pass on the things of God to others. The Lord would say, because you were responding to his voice at that quiet times in the prompting of the Holy Spirit, that he will respond to your voice as well. You all right, sister? You okay? But well, the Lord has shown me that you've been climbing higher, and I see a ladder, and the ladder has certain platforms on it, and when you get to a certain platform, I see you sitting on that platform, there's refreshment on that platform, but there's also a note to climb higher. And the Lord would say, if you continue to climb higher, there's certain treasures that he is actually positioned for you to take hold of. But the Lord has seen you try to climb, and the ladders wobble, but the Lord would say, look at the platform above, climb to it, receive refreshment to climb even higher, because the Lord has great things in store for you. He's a great and a mighty God. Thank you, Jesus. God sometimes speaks unexpected, don't you, Remy? You know, I'm just thinking of you right now, and, and the Lord has shown me there's been times you know, in your life where you've just stayed at the same level. You've not gone up, you've not gone down. There's been times when you've dipped in your walk with the Lord and your faith with the Lord. But the Lord would say, I'm strengthening you because I want you to walk higher in me. The Lord would say, there's times when you're fearful of embracing the supernatural. But the Lord would say, don't fear the things that were placed within your hand because it's a seed of faith in your life that the Lord would say will be displayed before the throne of grace and it will accomplish and bring the things that you desire. Thank you, Jesus. You know, this is a prophet, prophet trying or prophet lying. It's just releasing what God shows us about a particular person's life. God's a great and a mighty God. Is that Pastor David at the back? Praise the Lord. You know what, David, I'm just looking at you right now. Have you ever closed the door and you think it's closed, but the catch doesn't quite make it? And the door opens a little bit by itself again. The Lord would say the enemy is trying to close doors on you. But the Lord would say they have not catched simply because there's no door that I open can he shut. And the Lord would say, I'm going to cause you to see those doors that are still open. And the Lord is saying, and I'm going to bring people, I'm going to cause the right connections that are going to cause you to advance and move forward. The Lord is making it very clear. Don't just look at the door and think it's closed. It is not catched. It is still open. And the doors he opens, no one would shut. Thank you, Jesus. We give you all the glory. Thank you, Jesus. You okay, Emma? Thank you, Jesus. I saw you when you were just walking through out towards the door earlier, and the Lord just <coughs> spoke to me. And it's almost like the enemy is trying to put you in a closet, and you're looking for the way out of that closet. You know, and that closet can be dark at times, and you can look around and there's a way out. And the Lord would say, the way out is to start to speak the word of God. It's to declare the word of God in your situations and over your life and the things that you want to see to take place and to come about. The Lord would say, I've placed a miracle in your life. Release it because that miracle isn't just for yourself. It's for other people. The Lord wants to confine it. The, the enemy wants to confine it in a closet. But the Lord is saying there's going to be a breakout in your life. It's a great God. The miracle working God. He wants to work in people's lives. This is the God that we serve. All I promise you is it's an offer from the Lord. You can accept it, you can reject it, you can move into it. You know what I do with prophecy? I pray it in. I pray it in and I start to move towards it and then God starts to move in amazing power within your life. He's a great and a mighty God. Thank you, Jesus. We give you all the glory. All the glory. Sword of course, Shanda. That sister there, 
that's that's to the chat. You, yeah, you looking around now thinking, it's mm -hmm. to me. You know, just see that there's tremendous potential within your life, potential. It's almost like untapped. You've not really discovered who you are, but the Lord is saying, I'm going to show you who you really are in me, the giftings that they've placed within your life, the potential that you are. The Lord is saying, I'm going to start to raise you up. And the Lord would say, it won't come all at once, but there will be degrees and increments of blessing that you will move into. Thank you, Jesus, for giving you all the glory. You okay, Grace? You know, when I, I look at you, I see just a, a treasure, just like a, a diamond brooch, but it's been thrown down and trampled in the mud. But the Lord still sees the sparkle and sees his hand reaching down, taking it, washing it clean. And the Lord would say, I'm going to make you a trophy of grace because the enemy has worked against you to crush you, to bury you. And the Lord would say, I am going to raise you up and your dependence is going to be upon him. Thank you, Jesus, for giving you all the glory. But let's look at the word of God. Today, our God's a great and a mighty God. I want you to turn in your Bibles to Galatians chapter 1. I'm going to read from verse 6 to verse 10. This is what the Apostle Paul wrote to the Galatian church. He says, I'm astonished that you are so quickly deserting the one who called you by grace of Christ and are turning to a different gospel, which is really no gospel at all. Evidently, some people are throwing you into confusion and trying to prevent or to pervert the gospel of Christ. But even if we are an angel from heaven should preach a gospel other than the one we preach to you, then he'd be eternally condemned. As we have already said, so now I say again, if anyone is preaching to you a gospel other than that you accept it, let it be eternally condemned. Am I now trying to win the approval of men or of God? Or am I trying to please men? If I was still trying to please, please men, I would not be a servant of Christ. And God will bless his word to us this morning. You know, folks, we're actually living in times today where many people just simply believe in an historic gospel. A gospel that lacks presence, a gospel that lacks power to actually change lives. They believe that God did amazing miracles, moved in power signs, and wonders. They even believe that God showed his glory, but they believe that he did it yesterday. They believe that he did it in times past. They don't believe that God will do the same things today. But the amazing truth is this, that the Bible tells us that God is the great I am. He's not the great I was. He's a God that will work in your life and move in tremendous power. God doesn't change, the Bible says, like shifting shadows. Jesus himself is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. What he did yesterday, he will do today. What he does today, he will do tomorrow. We need to believe in the living God. Our God is an ever-present help in times of trouble. He's active, he's working all over the world today. So to hold a view that God and the gospel are just his story actually robs the gospel of his power to change lives. The Apostle Paul said to the Corinthian church, 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 4, he warned the Corinthian church, born again believers, about receiving another gospel. So we can clearly see that it is possible to believe in another gospel, a gospel that is contrary to the true gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we're living in times today where there are many other gospels being presented. There are many in the church today who embrace another gospel. For example, there are those who just simply present a gospel that simply proclaims the forgiveness of sins, that if you accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Saviour, then you're certain of a place in heaven when you die. And although this is true, it's only part of the gospel. It's just that. It's part of the gospel. And to preach and accept a watered down or a partial gospel, a diluted gospel, will actually cause God's people to live in a lesser place, a lower place, to really live a downgraded life than the life that Jesus expects for you. Jesus said, I've come that you may have life and life more abundantly. Quality, the best possible life in him. Many believers today see healing, they see deliverance, you see, the provisions of God are something they will embrace someplace in the future or sometime in the future. Yet God is a God of now. 
And we need to be people that don't sit around waiting for things that Jesus Christ has already provided for us through his death and resurrection on Calvary's cross. We've got to take hold of the promises of God. We've got to make them real in our life and appropriate them through faith. All of those wonderful blessings of Jesus Christ are available to you. I've met believers today who will tell me, you know, I want to get to heaven and I'll have a new body. Well, that's absolutely true. But God wants to deal with the sickness in your life. In fact, it's already dealt with it. And we need to be people that believe those truths. That's why I told you earlier that a dead person is not bothered by his sickness simply because they died. And you need to be someone who dies to yourself and lives to Christ that his life starts to manifest in your physical body. The book of Romans makes it very, very clear that if he who raised Christ from the dead dwells within you, that he who raised Christ from the dead will quicken your mortal body. He begins a work within you. He commences a work within you to produce health. But you have to believe it. The activation is to believe the word of God. And God wants you to believe his truth and not to believe the lies of another diluted gospel that says, okay, you say, but the healing, the deliverance, the provisions of God are all being stored up for you in heaven. You have got eternity within your heart. The Bible tells us in the book of Ecclesiastes that God placed eternity within the hearts of men. Where you spend eternity depends upon your response to the word of God. The provisions that you have today depend upon your response to the word of God. Who you are depends upon the response to the word of God. We need to be people that respond to God's word and not the enemy's word. That we believe God's report and not the enemy. The enemy will bring thoughts. It will bring suggestions, it will bring ideas and views into your life. But you're to really throw or cast those, those views and ideas down. You're to dispel those things. Because the moment you start to believe the lies of the enemy, you do empower him. You give him a stronger place, a greater place, more opportunity to work within your life. So you've got to cast those thoughts down. We're living in times today where people are not expecting the power of God to move. That is not the gospel of the kingdom of God. It is not the gospel that I believe in today. I'm not unusual. There are many people today that believe the word of God. And we all need to believe his word if it means that you stand out and you look different than others around you. Our God is a supernatural God that will move with power, signs and wonders that will cause exploits, supernatural happenings to take place today. He can journey you wherever he wants because our God is real and he wants to work within your life. So to believe in our diluted gospel that no power happens today is really another gospel. And Paul warns the church at least on three occasions about receiving another gospel. Now another gospel that people receive today is a social gospel. This is very popular. The gospel focuses on really relieving society's problems such as poverty, such as hunger, such as injustice. In other words, it addresses the needs of people around them. Now, although this is absolutely essential and it is part of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, because he tells us to love our neighbours as ourselves, but we need to be people that understand the truth of God's word. Let me just say this as well, where needs are concerned. You know what the word of God says? Let us do good to all people. That's what it says. So that's a command of God. It's not an optional extra that you can choose to, to obey when you want. It's a command of God. But let me finish it. Especially to those who belong to the family of believers. So where is my priority? If I see a man on the street in need, and I see Alan here in need, my priority is to meet his needs. On many occasions we're looking outside and we can't see the needs under our nose. The gospel is to meet the needs of the people of God, first and foremost, in the powerful name of the Lord Jesus Christ. But we have this social gospel. The downside of it is that many who practice a social gospel often ignore or downplay the spiritual needs of a person. Relationship with Father through the Lord Jesus Christ is, is paramount. 
the most important thing to see people saved. Let me just say this. I can give a man a new coat. I can give him a meal to eat. To eat. But if he dies outside of Christ Jesus, he will stand before the Lord Jesus Christ naked and empty. It's criminal if we don't share the word of God. I hear people today will say, well, this is just evangelism through kindness. It is not kind to not share the word of God with a person. It's an act of cruelty. And yet people think, well, I can give them something to eat, I can give them a cloak. Yes, we to do those things. But the most important thing is to share the truth that will absolutely transform a person's life. <clears throat> and the Holy Spirit can transform any person's life today. The danger of a social gospel is trying to meet the needs of others without really relying on the supernatural power of God because it's in your means to do it. How can you expect the supernatural if you can do it? Many people build ministries and build works about what they can do. So it leaves no room for God to move supernaturally in their life. How about trying to do something that you know is impossible for you to do? That is the ground that God works on. That is the foundation that God builds upon. Many don't receive the supernatural works of God <coughs> in and around their lives simply because, simply because they don't trust God in these areas to move in power. It's very easy, it's very comfortable to do things within your own ability. But God wants to stretch you. Amen. God wants you to move outside your ability. You know, when you start to operate, even in the gifts of the Holy Spirit, God may give you a word, but it may be just a word, not a sentence. But you're going to act upon that word, and as God gives you that word, it will start to follow. But you're going to act upon that one word, you're going to do it. And it may mean that your stomach's churning a little bit. But there's a prompting of the Holy Spirit that says, release it. And as you release it, God starts to unfold his word to other people, to the congregation of believers. But you've got to act upon God's word. Amen. And we need to be people that act upon God's word that when God prompts you, move with the prompting of the Holy Spirit. Even if you don't know the full plan and the full purpose, he never gives you the full plan. He, he, plan. he just lays down one page in stone at a time. And as we're obedient to walk upon that, it starts to unfold the road before us. He wants you to be a people that embrace the true gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ and not be diverted to this wishy-washy, nice sort of Christianity that seems to want to wash people, groom them, and say nothing for the cause of Christ. It does not change the man. We need to move in power. Every religious group in the world today, the Muslims are food banks. The Muslims give clothes out. But they can't lead a person to Christ. They can't bring a life-changing transformation into a person's life by releasing the word of God to them. But yet, we have the ability to do that. We've got to be people that share the word of God and not just rely upon, if you like, the things that we know to do. We've got to be people that lead people and show people. If you're giving people provision, you can tell them that you have a God that has amazing provision, amazing abundance to meet their every need. This is why I told you that when economies crash, the economy of heaven is still intact. God is able to meet your needs. Amen. Ask Elijah about that. God provided for him, even during a time of extreme famine. God wants us to understand this. You see, a gospel that doesn't produce change in a person's <laughs> life is really contrary to the kingdom message that Jesus proclaimed. The true gospel brings repentance. You know, you become a believer. is isn't just through praying a prayer in the back of a leaflet, folks. You become a believer by believing on the Lord Jesus Christ. Repentance takes place. What must we do to be saved? Repent and believe. So there's a formula, if you like, of how to go about it. Not just this quick, easy thing that we see today. And people walk away having supposedly made commitments. We need to be people that recognize that God wants to bring his church in line with his word. Many in the church today like to hear a gospel 
message that really conforms to their views, their opinions, and their beliefs. I've had many people that say to others, oh, the pastor was using his sermon to have a go at me today. The pastor was aiming the sermon at me. Listen, don't get on to the messenger, get on to the one who brought the, brought the message in the first place. Speak to him if you have a problem. But what you have to understand, if the word of God ruffles you and it seems to be personalized towards you, maybe the Holy Spirit is convicting you and wanting you to move in line to what he wants rather than you just stay in the place you want to be. A gospel that doesn't move you is not a gospel at all. <clears throat> a gospel that doesn't bring change is another gospel. It allows you to stay the same. There are thousands upon thousands in the UK today <clears throat> that simply allow no movement of the gospel in their life because they're comfortable with what they've got. The gospel will change you. It will move you into the greater things that God has. It's a different gospel around today, one that empowers so we don't believe in healing. Well, that's not the gospel of Jesus Christ. We don't believe in deliverance. That's not the gospel of Jesus Christ. We don't believe in witnessing. You know, that's not the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. We need to be people that are changed. Look at the prayerlessness that's in the church. Since when has it been acceptable for you not to pray for days on end? Since when has it been acceptable for you to never practice the discipline of fasting? It's in the word of God. Fasting will sharpen you in the things of God. If you're looking dull and your life is dull and it's blunt, you need to go to that place where you're sharpened and that means fasting and seeking the Lord out. It makes you more spiritual aware. It will deal with the unbelief within your life so that you'll start to believe the word of God like never before. And yet many believers think it's acceptable never to fast. Jesus said, you know, fast the bridegroom's here, but he's gone, we fast. We're in that place right now where we need to realize there's a power when we start to fast and we start to seek the Lord out and begin to pray. Where's your Bible got dust upon it? Never really opened. Days on end when you've never really read or it's just quick speed reading. Never really allowed the Holy Spirit to move in your life. Since when's that become acceptable to the gospel message? It's not. We need to be people that are dedicated to the Lord Jesus Christ. Since when have your priorities been the priority? It's got to be Jesus' priorities that are number one within your life. Didn't God speak to through Haggai the prophet and speak to the people and say, you know, you're all doing all you nice houses. <clears throat> you're all into DIY. You're all spending all your money on your extensions. But the house of the Lord is in ruins. We have believers today that spend more money on pet food than on mission and the cause of Christ. Is that right? Yeah. Believers today spend more money on takeaways mm. when we've got people that are begging for food. I know some of my African brothers and sisters mm. over in, in different places, Malawi, Uganda, that are struggling just to eat the basics mm. and you're scraping in the bin. Mm. We have no compassion, no cause. That is not the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus healed people minister to them out of compassion. He fed 5,000. You know why? Because the Bible said what people had was given to him. And when a person gives what they have to him, even though it seems little, he's able to bless it, to break it, to divide it, to multiply it. It's a miracle. It divides and it really multiplies. That have many teachers puzzled today. But that's exactly what Jesus Christ did. That's the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm. We're just comfortable. We come to church when we want. Mm. Yeah. Social media mm. is a great tool mm. for evangelism. Mm. But if it stops you coming to a gathering, oh, I'll go to church this morning. Mm. I'll catch it up later. Mm. I'll watch the message on YouTube. It's recorded anyway. 
That is absolute laziness and you are robbing the body of Christ of the blessing you may bring. Amen. And you're robbing other people of bringing blessing into your life. So things may be useful and things may be good, but if they're not used correctly, it is wrong. And yet we see, I belong to an online church. Come on. Come on. We connected. No, you are not. You are not. You see, you challenge. It's very difficult for people just to walk out of the church service if there's something they don't like. <coughs> but where the internet's concerned, you can just flick it off. They can nip to the bathroom. They don't even have to get out of bed. They can stay in bed all day and just watch the messages. It's so wrong. And this is the place the church is in today. And the Apostle Paul is addressing these issues because he's talking about them receiving another gospel. And I'm saying to that today, there are many different gospels that people take hold of. And yet there's only a true gospel of the kingdom. To do the things that Jesus did. To be like him in this world. What about holiness? Where's the practice of holiness today? Doesn't the Bible tell us that there is a highway called holiness? It's not just the M62. There's a highway. <clears throat> There's lots of congestion on the M62. But God said the highway of holiness, there is no congestion. You know why there's no congestion? Because many don't want to take that route. And yet God has called you to be holy. He said without holiness, no one, no one will see God. And how can you be holy unless you spend time in the presence of God time with other believers and allow the Holy Spirit to bring a transformation into your life. Amen. We've got to listen to what he's saying. There's many people in the Bible that moved in tremendous power but who remain humble enough to listen to the Holy Spirit. If you think of someone like Stephen, not Stephen, yeah, Philip went down to Samaria. He preached the Christ. No diluted gospel there. He preached the full message of the Lord Jesus Christ. Maybe there was people that didn't want to hear what he had to say. Well, it was their choice. He said it anyway. Many people were healed. Many people were delivered. Many people were saved. The Bible says there was great joy in that city. A revival broke out. Even an occultic practitioner was rem remarkably changed <laughs> under the presence and the power of God. Yes, he still had some issues within his life, like many believers today, even though they're born again. But the power of God will ferret them out of your life if you allow it. So the Bible tells us he's in this place, he's in the revival place. But then the Lord tells him to go on this desert road. That desert road was an unused road. That desert road was not a popular road, only a few went upon it. But he was willing to leave a revival place to go to the place where God had called him to carry out the work. God had called him to reach one man. It reached perhaps thousands in Samaria, but God was moving him out of that place to a place where he would reach one man. But that one man was significant in taking the word of God to Ethiopia. And we need to be people that understand that one person you may witness to can be absolutely significant in sharing the word of God. When was the last time you witnessed to someone? When I came to church this morning to be encouraging, the pastor's having a go at us. No, I'm not having a go at you. I'm just presenting to you truth so that you, you can look at it soberly and recognize where you are. God wants you to be at a higher level than you are right now. Not having some sort of comfortable Christianity where you serve God at your own convenience. We need to be people that are aware of the times we are living in. We really do. People regularly tell me we're living in the last days. They're telling me they're living in the last days, but they're not acting like they're living in the last days. They're telling me that Jesus is coming soon, but they're not living as if they're prepared to meet him. That is not the gospel that we see preached by the early church. And we need to move back to the truth of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. God wants to bring amazing transformation into your life. A gospel that never confronts sin is not the gospel at all. If I knew you was a drunkard, or I knew two or three of you were drunkard, 
I've got to confront that. You understand that? The Bible makes it very clear. If we do not confront sin, how can it be a gospel? Because the people will start to think, well, that's acceptable. The pastor's not bothered about it. And there are many churches that allow all sorts of sin into the church and the pastors are not bothered about it. But this is not one of those churches. Amen. And if you're living in sin, you need to get right with the living God and you find somewhere else. My confidence is this, that God will build his church Amen. and the gates of all will not prevail. And he will build the church. He will build the church with those stones that have been clean and prepared to fit in. Amen. And to fit into what God wants, not what everybody else wants today. Amen. Just because people say certain things does not mean that it's right where God is concerned. We have churches today that don't have midweek meetings anymore because the people don't come. But you know what? If it was just me, I would come. If it was just me, I would come. I would just recognise that the truth of God's word says that God can save whether by few or by many. He doesn't take many. And God is looking for those that have a heart for him. That's why God whittled down the army that Gideon had. So that no one could rely and say, we have done this in our own strength and our own power, we've brought about this victory. They have to rely upon the living God. And so God brought a lower number so they knew it was God that brought them the victory. So we have many churches today that don't have any other meetings than the Sundays because people don't bother coming. Why are they no longer hungry? Why are they no longer having an appetite for the things of God? You've got to understand that if you're apathetic, lethargic in the things of God, that's the power of the enemy moving against you. We need to be people that are on fire for the living God and start to seek him out again today. Maybe there's believers here today that have known times when you've been closer to the Lord than you are right now. And you can remember those times when you spent a lot of time in prayer, when you got those revelations from God, when you witness the people was so fervent. Sometimes people today, when they witness, it's like taking a damp match to a bonfire. It's not gonna work, is it? You've gotta be on fire for God. Amen. You can have someone witness to someone, but they're looking at the person's life and say, well, it's not real. They say one thing, but they're not living it out. We've gotta be people that live it out so that when you share the word of God with someone, they know this person means it. I went to a church, a place, a gathering, almost like a drop-in centre of, of alcoholics and, and drug users, and I shared the word of God. And people responded and got their lives right before God. And later a man came and said, those people that came out are some of the most notorious people in that area, and yet they responded to the word of God. He said, when you preach, you preach like you believe it. <laughs> well, how am I supposed to preach? Like a dog? <laughs> There's lots of people that preach, them, but they don't believe it themselves. I believe right. in divine healing. I was thinking just the other day <clears throat> about anointing. You know, people want to seek out anointing today. Oh, Lord, would you give me swift witness of anointing? Would you give me an anointing of John G. Lake to heal the sick? Would you give me this person's anointing, that person's anointing? I don't need to seek out any anointing of another man. I don't need to seek out the anointing of Dave Marley. I need to seek out the anointing of the Lord. That is the only anointing I need. I don't have to have you to come and lay hands upon me, to empower me. I go with what I've got. Because you know what? I've got the Holy Spirit within me, and it's more than enough. I would sooner have the Holy Spirit within me going with me wherever I go than all the congregation going. <clears throat> because it's more powerful, more reliable. He speaks truth. He leads me in all truth. He's a miracle worker, and he's within me. And so wherever I go, I'm not having to pray all, oh, you know. We can pray ourselves out of obedience. Or oh, need to pray more power for a goal, and we're praying. But sometimes you just got to go with what you've got. Because you're praying yourself out, and prayer can be a substitute for obedience to the Word of God. The Bible tells us, go into the world. But it says, it doesn't say, stay at home. 
He says, go. All I need to pray about going there. I need to pray about witnessing to this person. No, you do not. If you need to pray, you need to go to repent for that belief system. Any opportunity arise, I'll share the word of God. I'll look to actually con to, to move that conversation onto the law and for an opportunity to pray. I will look to do that within a person's life. Because I know that God loves that person and he wants them saving. So we've got to move away from all these wrong ideas that we have and press into the things of God. Yeah. Our God is a great God. <coughs> I've got a friend of mine who is a minister at a Methodist church. And you know, sometimes in a Methodist church, I suppose because of lack of ministers, maybe because they don't want to spend the money, they have one minister who is over six, seven, eight, nine, ten churches. So Sunday's a busy day, they go to that church, this church, and they, they travel to all these different churches and sometimes do them on a rotor. But they go to these churches, and what they've done, they've moved away from the true gospel of Jesus Christ. Because if there's anything that, that needs to be discussed, they have a vote. Well, God's idea was to have elders, a government over the church, not to put a vote to a congregation, because you could have a congregation half full of unbelievers, and they vote anything in. Dangerous place to be in. And this minister was telling me that they're really into accepting homosexuality in the church and gay marriage. <coughs> Sort of a gospel. And they accept that. They bring it in. The Church of England are the same. And so they had a vote amongst the clergy. And so some of the clergy voted against it. So they said, it's okay to you vote against it, but we would like you to go on a course for diversity, equality, and inclusion. In other words, if you don't agree with us, we'll send you on a course and we'll brainwash you and we'll cause you to agree with us. Yeah. That's what they were doing. So many of them don't agree with that. And yet we see today, we see it seem to be acceptable in the church. That's another gospel. It is not my gospel, it's not my stand. The word of God is very clear. Let me just read this to you. When Jesus had finished saying these things, he left Galilee and went into the region of Judea to the other side of the Jordan. Large crowds followed him and he healed them. Some Pharisees came to him to test him. They asked, is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife for any and any reason? The Jews had this thing that if the wife displeased them, they give them an issue, certificate of divorce, and send them away. Burn your toes, send them away. <laughs> Don't pick up your socks off the floor, fellas, you send them away. This was the view they had. Jesus said this, and then you know what I'm getting to. Haven't you read, he replied, that at the beginning, they asked, is it lawful for a man? Jesus went before the law. You understand that? The law came through Moses. Jesus went before the law. He went to the beginning. So he's defining something here. He replied, at the beginning, the, cre the crea creator made them male and female and said, this is the reason for a man to leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and the two will become one flesh, so they are no longer two but one. Therefore God, what God has joined together, let no man separate. So Jesus is defining a marriage. So where homosexuality is concerned, Jesus is defining the marriage. A marriage is between a male and a female, not a male and a male and a female and a female. No same-sex marriage. In fact, there's no such thing by definition as a same-sex marriage. It's not a marriage. It's something else. It's got to be something else. It's not what Jesus said. So when people say, did Jesus mention homosexuality about gay marriages? There you've got a scripture where he's defining what a marriage should be. God defines a marriage, not men. I don't care if Boris Johnson tries to define it. I'm not interested what Boris Johnson has to say in these areas. I'm interested in what Jesus Christ has to say. He defines these things. And yet we see today 
the church, ignore the pop, bending over backwards to upset these people in. It is not right. And using the law to come against those that speak the truth. Didn't the Pharisees quote the law? Didn't they bring the law? Is it lawful? See, there's many things in our land today that seem to be lawful, but the illegal where God is concerned. Mm -hmm. And we need to accept what God says, which is the true gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, and move away from the popular views and the popular ideas that people have today. When Daniel was in Babylon, Daniel was in the worst culture you could absolutely imagine. And we're very close to that today. But he never allowed the views, the ideas, the philosophies, the teachings that was in that culture to affect him. In fact, when the king assigned to him food from the king's table, he would not eat it. You know why? He kept his true identity because those meats that came his way were unclean meats and he was not going to defile the word of God just to live in the lap of luxury. And many believers today are defying the word of God to live in the lap of luxury. What about the prosperity gospel? I believe that God will bless you, but I believe this. Walk in obedience to God. And the Bible tells us, put his kingdom first and all these things will be added to you. God gives to you. I can sometimes just think about something I want from the Lord. And it comes in. People give in that area. I don't have to be praying, Lord, give me another jet. That is not the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Why don't they sell the jets and give to the poor? It is not the gospel. And many churches are like that today. Many churches of all sorts and catch bait at the door will give you a bag of shopping if you come into the meeting. It's a bribe. You go in that meeting, you get a bag of shopping, or you get a lot of chains on your life as well. We need to present the simple truth of God's word. Light a fire, the people will come. And we need to be on fire for the Lord Jesus Christ. This is prosperity message. And I've said this many times. I've been in gatherings. I've heard them saying, you know, that, oh, if you sow into my ministry today, you will be blessed abundantly. The Lord showed me 10 people here need to give me 100 pounds, a thousand pounds. <laughs> 10, 11, 12, come out. They don't send the extras back. If God showed them 10, they don't send them back. They just take that money in, don't they? I know of a case once where they made an appeal because a man who was speaking at a, a financial conference was staying in a hotel and they wanted, I'm staying there too nice, but they wanted the congregation to pay his bill for 400 pounds. Well, I tell you what, I'd put him up in my house for £400. Pounds. <laughs> <laughs> Why couldn't you stay in a modest hotel? Why couldn't you stay in a travel lodge? Why couldn't you not stay with a member of the congregation? What is the problem? He's wanting to live in the lap of luxury and wanting the congregation to pay for it at a financial gathering where he's teaching them about how to bring an increase. Well, come on. Christians need to wise up and stop being manipulated because it's nothing more than witchcraft. I went to a meeting uh, with, with Keeper, don't go to the back there, with Keeper, what's the Keeper title? It's absolutely true. I don't lie for the Lord, but tell me the truth. And I went to the meeting, there's only good meetings these Keeper, but I'll tell, I'll tell you this now, they'll have half an hour portion, it'll be like a sermon, on you giving money. And that's exactly what they did. And they manipulate the people, and all the people are running out, putting notes in, pushing it in the in, in the minister's pocket, everything, and the money's going on there and there. But there's two seats where two people never moved. Absolutely manipulation. And then coming out with comments like, "Well, you know what? There was one time I went to a meeting, and, and uh, I had five pounds in me in my pocket for a fish supper. It's always a few years ago. It won't cost five pounds for a fish supper now, will it?" 
And he said, that God spoke to me and told me to put that money in the collection, you know, and I was worried about my fish supper, you know, and all of a sudden, you know, so I put five pounds in the collection, and when I went out, I found five pounds, and he said, you know, so some of you here tonight, you know, just put your money in, just put your money in, don't worry about your bus fare, put your money in. I said to Keith, I tell you this, I tell you, I said to Keith, I tell you this, there'll be some of these people walking home tonight. <laughs> Absolute manipulation. That is not the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, we're to meet the needs of the poor. We're to meet the needs of the people in the congregation. But we are not to be manipulated to line the pockets of people that want a plane at every airport, a ship at every port, and a house at every holiday destination. That is not the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. They can stand in their tailored suits, but they're different than John the Baptist. He didn't have no tailored suit, and yet he was on fire for the things of God. I'm not saying that you can't have things in life. God wants you to have things, but don't let those things control your life. Don't let them become the gospel where you're only preaching about prosperity and how the people should be prospering. Ten ways to make you successful, but you've got to buy the book at £20 a price. You know, I'm going to give you this book. I've got a book here. It's really £20. But I'm going to give you this you for a love offering of 21 pounds. <laughs> Come on. I'm, all right. I'm just putting that scenario to you. But that's what they do. We're giving this book away free for a love offering. Well, who, who's giving the love offering? You or the people? It's the people. Look, let's not be manipulated. It's a different gospel. It's a prosperity gospel that is not the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, I know Jesus wore the finest clothes. Yes, that's why they gambled for him. I know that Jesus had uh, his own secretary looking after the money, even though he was helping himself to it. I know he had these things. I know he could give to the poor. <coughs> but his priority wasn't wearing the tailored suit. His priority was reaching the people. <laughs> with the truth of God's word. And we need to be people that get back to the basics of the true gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, not a other gospel. The Apostle Paul says, if another person comes and shares a different gospel than the gospel you receive, it's another gospel. If an angel from heaven appears and preaches another gospel, then the one we preach to you is another gospel. And we're hearing an other gospel today that is taking the divinity of Jesus Christ out He's, he's breaking the manhood uh, of, of people. In fact, you know, homosexuality is an offence against the living God because he's defiling his image. And in fact, above all the sins, sexual sins, the Bible said that they were so. In fact, homosexuality is an abomination where God is concerned. Well, they're taking me down on YouTube now, won't they? <laughs> <laughs> Does it really matter? Does it really matter if you have to knock on the door? All the prophets of old suffered for the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Why do we as believers think we should live comfortable lives when our master was nailed to a cross? There's got to be. There's got to be. Just not just the, the, the offense of the gospel where there's retaliation against it. But there's got to be that fragrance that goes out as well. And God wants fragrance to pour out of you, but sometimes fragrances only come out when you're crushed. Only come out when the alabaster jar is broken. We've got to be broken in this hand. We've got to get back to the simplicity of the gospel and stand up for what is right. I wouldn't stay in an organization that was promoting the things that we see promoted today. You know they teach children pronouns at schools, Christian schools. They're not Christian schools, they're Christian in name. They're not Christian in deed. They're teaching them all the wrong things. There's a massive, massive attack on our young people today because the enemy thinks that if they get them young, I'm gonna actually infiltrate and affect a generation. You as a believer are not just responsible for this generation, you're actually responsible for the next generation. You have got to teach your children truth, even if it's not popular. 
Because if you don't teach them truth, the schools will teach them lies. And their friends as well. You've got to be claiming truth. So we've got to understand that what really defines the true gospel is the presence and the power of God to change a man from the inside out. You know when you read through the word of God, you can quickly find it, the Apostle Paul addresses a number of issues within the church. If you think about the Corinthian church, you had all the gifts of the Spirit functioning within their lives, but yet they had problems and issues within their lives, didn't they? And we know that they had vices and things going on that should never be found within the body of Christ. But he addressed them. This is what the Apostle Paul says. Do you not know that the wicked will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be seen. Neither the sexually immoral, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor male prostitutes, nor homosexual offenders, neither thieves, nor the greedy, nor drunkards, nor slanderers, nor swindlers, will inherit the kingdom of God. It's not picking the homosexuals there, is it? It's giving a full list of people who are not inherit the kingdom of God. Then he says this, and that is what some of you were. But you was washed, you were sanctified, you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of God. In other words, those homosexual offenders, those drunkards, those swindlers, the sexually immoral, it says the adulterer, were actually transformed by the presence and the power of God because they heard a gospel of truth. The gospel is still the power of God for salvation. Amen. When you share the word of God, there is power on the words you share because that word is an eternal word. It's an imperishable seed and will have effect upon a person's life. I have confidence when I share the word of God that it will have effect upon people's lives. And Paul is saying here that the church was full of these people that have their lives turned around. So when we speak about another gospel that embraces same-sex marriage, gender fluid, non-binary, what are you talking about? When, it, when it, the church embraces that, it's a different gospel. But when the church transforms them, yeah. into the image of Christ yeah. it's the true gospel yeah. and we need to share the gospel the church has been quiet too long yeah. let's start to be a voice again yeah. let's be radical for the things of God yeah. radical for the things of God are just God's norm yeah. we've got to start to stand up we'll get me in trouble we may get you in trouble but at the end of the day it'd be worth getting in trouble to set people free we need to share the word of God. We've been quiet too long. God is starting to raise up a people that will stand on the true gospel. Thank you, Lord. Understand this. There are many different gospels. Many different messages that go out that affect people today. We need to be people that stand on the truth and declare the truth. It's the truth that will set you free. You shall know the truth and the truth will set you free. Like Jesus said, if you will be my disciples, you will obey my sayings and you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. So it starts to cause a freedom within your life, a real liberty. Let's pray right now. If you need freedom today, we'll pray for you. There's a sickness in your body. I said earlier about someone just having a pain in the shoulder, shoulder area there. To me, it was the right shoulder. I've got to is that you today? You know, then if you're still in pain today, right now, you come out, Jesus Christ will heal you. But I'm saying the word of God alone will heal you. He sent for his word to heal and to deliver them from their destruction. So the word of God alone will bring healing into your body and bring deliverance into your body. He's an amazing God. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray you would move amongst your people. Father, that Lord, I pray change would come as a result of today, that your people would start to live a life that is really worthy of the calling, that they would live a life that would make all heaven sing and all heaven rejoice in the name of Jesus Christ. Cause your people to stand for the things of God like never before, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, if you be blessed, if you need prayer today, you